Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Many of you probably know that I've been doing a video series demonstrating how to best use Topaz Labs to Noise AI, Sharpen AI, Photo AI, and Gigapixel AI as standalone applications and as plugins in Lightroom and Photoshop. I have most of the video series done. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to a playlist that contains all of the videos in the series. I only have two videos left. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Gigapixel AI as a plugin in Photoshop. Next week sometime, I'll do the final video in the series demonstrating how to use Gigapixel AI as a standalone application. As you can see on my desktop, I have a Fuji RAW file and I have my system set up so that if I double click on any RAW file, no matter what manufacturer RAW file, in this case Fuji, it will automatically open up into Photoshop. And more specifically, when you open up a RAW file into Photoshop, it opens up into Camera Raw, and this is where we'd like to start. Now, you can see that this is an unedited RAW file. Nothing's been done to it. And it's a nice photo of the bird, but I wish I had a longer lens so that I could get in tighter on the bird. Well, no worries. We have Gigapixel AI. So I could do a very significant crop on this and still be able to upscale it with Gigapixel so that I could get a nice, large print from it. Now what I do when I open up a raw file into Photoshop and then of course that raw file opens up into um, Camera Raw. Now if you're opening up a different image file like a TIFF or a JPEG, go to the Camera Raw filter first and do your editing here and do your crop here. I'm going to do the crop right away. So I'm going to go to crop and I think for this image we're going to crop it square. And I mentioned it's going to be a quite significant crop. So we're going to crop away most of the pixels. So something like that. So that looks pretty good. And you look at the bottom, you can see that it is now 1,138 pixels by 1,138 pixels. It's very small now. So if I wanted to print this, I only could probably get a really small print from it. But if I wanted to get a large print from it, I'd need to use Gigapixel. So we're going to do that in a moment. We're going to finish our editing here in Camera Raw first. And I'm not going to do anything unusual. I'm just going to pull highlights down, open up shadows. I'm going to get a white point the way I normally do. I hold the Option key on my Mac. It's Alt key on a PC. Move the white slider to the right till I see color bleeding through. Then I just black, back that off until that color's gone. That's typically how I'll do a white point. Same thing for blacks. So hold the Alt Option key in, click on that. Now, I don't mind clipping the shadows a little bit, so I'll move that a little further and actually have some of the colors bleed through. I don't mind clipping the dark part of that bird's eye. I think that's the way it should be. That looks pretty good. I'll add just a tiny bit of texture, just a tiny bit of clarity, some vibrance. There's a bit of noise, but not so much noise where I think I need to use to noise AI. So I'm just going to jump down to detail and I'll go to this noise reduction slider and I'll move that to the right to that noise is cleaned up. That looks pretty good. That's my editing. That's all I'm going to do here. But I need to upscale it in Gigapixel, and you do that in Photoshop. So what we need to do is open this up into Photoshop. And to do that, go to the lower right-hand corner and click on this button, Open in Photoshop. Now at this point, with those other apps, that's Denoise AI, Sharpen AI, and Photo AI, I mentioned two things. Duplicate the background layer, and then make that new layer a smart object. First of all, you don't have to duplicate the background layer when you're using Gigapixel as a Photoshop plugin, for some reason, the Gigapixel plugin automatically duplicates the background layer. So you don't have to worry about that. Secondly, if you do make that layer a smart object, for some reason, Gigapixel doesn't run. Gigapixel just won't work on smart objects. So you can't do that here. And if you haven't seen my other videos, the reason why you typically or usually want to make the layer a smart object is because when you use a filter on it, like Sharpen AI or Denoise AI or Photo AI or Camera Raw or anything as a filter on that layer, you're able to go back in and re-edit right where you left off. And you're only able to do that on a smart object or a smart layer. Well, Gigapixel AI doesn't work on smart objects, smart layers, so we can't do that. So we're going to send this directly into Gigapixel AI, and this is what trips many people up, and I've received numerous emails on it. They often then will go up to Filter like you normally would and go down to Topaz Labs, and you don't see Gigapixel here. Denoise is here, Photo AI is here, Sharpen's here. No Gigapixel. To get this into Gigapixel AI, you have to go up to File, 
then down to automate, then over and down to Gigapixel AI right here. Let's click there and it will open it up into Gigapixel AI. Now, I always mention with all these videos that I like to be in the specific type of view called comparison view because comparison view allows you to look at different models depending on what app you're in all at once. In the case of Gigapixel AI, there's six different AI models. And I'd like to look at as many of them at one time so I could compare them to one another. So with comparison view, I could see four of them at one time. You can see the views are along the top. There's single view, split view, side-by-side -side view, and comparison view. I'm going to go to the navigator window and move this rectangle over the bird's head. Whenever you move anything a little bit, even a tiny bit, it has to re-render everything. So you just have to wait a second while everything re-renders. Now you can see right now I have on the top left-hand side the standard model. To the right of that, the low resolution model. To the lower left, the very compressed model. And to the lower right, lines. So those are four of these six models. Also, and I always say this, I like to compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges. So I want to make sure that all of the models have the setting set to auto. This is where Gigapixel AI determines the uh, slider settings automatically. That way I'm just looking at them in similar like conditions and I could better determine which one is best. Now standard, just click on it, make it active. We're seeing it over here. Then click on low resolution, make sure it's on auto. Click on very compressed, make sure it's on auto. Click on lines, make sure it's on auto. Okay, all of them are on auto, at least these four. But there's two others here that we're not seeing, HQ and Art and CG. What I usually will do at this point is determine which one of these four is worst. It's either of the bottom ones, they're just over overly sharpened. So let's just say lines is the worst. So I'll just make that active by clicking on it, then click on one of the buttons on the right that we're not looking at, Art and CG, and it will just swap it out with Art and CG. You have to wait for it to update looks pretty much the same as lines. Then we'll just swap that out with HQ and see what that looks like. Okay, it looks the worst of the four. So the best, in my opinion, is the standard model. Now, one thing, there's resize modes. And I mentioned this was pretty small. It was 1138 by 1138. Uh, by just the last time I used this, I had it upscaled at 4x, which makes everything four times larger. And that makes it 4552 by 4552. And that actually looks pretty good. So I could change it. I could go 2x or 6x. I could make it smaller with 0.5x. I could put my own uh, multiplier in there. So if I want to go 8x, I could click this dot, dot, dot x button and then put an 8 or something like that. I could just, if I don't want to use a scale multiplier. I could just put in a specific width. In this case, it's square. So of course the length would be the same. Uh, if it was different, it would automatically scale it properly. So it is in the same ratio, or I could put in a height. Now in this case here, I think 4X is fine. So I'm not going to do anything there. Now I've determined that standard is best. What I usually would do is then go to single view mode with that active. Somebody was at the door and the dog started barking, so I had to pause the video and then restart it. But I'm taking up where I left off. So I've determined that the standard model is the best and I'm going to use 4X. Typically what I'll do at this point is move from comparison view to single view. So I'll click on single view. And if I need to reposition the um, navigator window, I will, but I think this looks fine. Then I'll determine if I need to do anything else with the sliders. Like, do I want, to, is, is there noise? I'll move the suppressed noise slider to the right. If I think it should be sharper, I could move them or move blur to the right. If there are compression artifacts, I could fix those by moving this slider to the right. In this case, I don't think I really need to do any of that. There's before and there's after, before, after. Um, also, if this had a person in it, sometimes when you upscale it, it makes the person's face features look like fake, it look like a mannequin. You could fix that with the face recovery switch. And sometimes uh, when you upscale it, the shadows look muddy. So you could fix that with gamma correction. And typically I just leave that on. So there's before and there's after. Before, after. I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to click apply. And 
it will then return us to Photoshop and we'll have our upscaled image. And you could see that it will be kind of zoomed in. So you could fit this to screen in Photoshop by hitting Command or Control Zero. First click on it so it's active, then Command or Control Zero. And now you could see it there. Now, there's before and there's after. Maybe you can't see the difference, so let me zoom in a little bit. I'll hit Command Plus a couple times. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. You can see it's definitely sharper, especially in the breast or neck area of the bird. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. I think it looks pretty good. And we'll go to Command-0 to fit it to screen. And if I go up to Image, and I go to Image Size, you'll see it's 4552 by 4552. So if I want to print this now, I could get a fairly large print from it um, because we upscaled it with Gigapixel AI. Now, at this point, you may just want to save it as a JPEG. If you do, you don't go to File, Save when you're in Photoshop. For those of you not uh, familiar with Photoshop, you would go to File, Export, and then export as, and then there's a little drop down here and you could choose uh, between a PNG, JPEG, and if it gets done there, or a GIF, or GIF is I think it's more accurately pronounced. Then you could choose the quality. Uh, it goes, the scale goes from one to seven. You'll see that as you move the quality, the size or the actual file size gets smaller, it uses more compression. So we're at low quality, it's 215.3 kilobytes. And if I go up to seven, you'll see it's 7.4 megabytes. So it's a much bigger file. It's not compressed. Typically, I keep it at six, 2.1 megabytes. You can see it's a lot smaller. You could resize it if you need to here. Don't upscale it though, just go smaller. And uh, then you could just save it. Uh, metadata, none. Uh, usually you convert it to sRGB that um, will make sure that it will render the colors properly on any monitor or any mobile device. And you could embed the color profile on it too. It just makes the file a little small, a little larger. And then you can click export and then it will ask you where to save it. And then for the name, so we'll save it to the desktop and we'll just call it bird to the desktop right there, just like that. So we saved it. Now, if you want to save everything, these layers and everything else, what you need to do is go to File, Save, and you want to save it as a Photoshop file, a PSD file. And we'll just use the original file name for this and we'll save it to the desktop as well, just like that. Now, unfortunately, because Gigapixel doesn't work with smart objects or smart layers for that matter, uh, because um, this layer is the Gigapixel layer, you just can't double click on it and go back into Gigapixel and take up right where you left off just doesn't work that way. So we'll close down Photoshop. And on our desktop is our JPEG. There it is, upscaled. And we have our PSD file. And we have, of course, the original RAW file. The original RAW file is not touched at all. It's non-destructive. If I want to open up and see our layers again, I'll just open up this Photoshop file and it will open up into Photoshop. And because it's a Photoshop file, it won't open up into Camera Raw. It just opens up into Photoshop and there's our two layers. So that's how you use Gigapixel AI as a plugin in Photoshop. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.